<laughs> See who is stuck again in the patches for coding. Listen, getting nosy with going to my Databricks workspace and checking out what codes I develop really doesn't help me. Unless you can code and debug my errors. If you remember all Spark syntax and coding. I Here didn't get into your Databricks workspace. I can read your mind. We are the same. Your memory is mine. Simple. Can you read my mind now and tell me what I'm thinking about right now? Just a second. By the way, I know where you're stuck in your code. You just need to define a uh, user-defined function in your patches for code to run that math calculation. That's it. Thank you so much. But talking doesn't help. Code it. It does. As of now, you can type in English what transformation you want to do using Apache Spark, let's say in Databricks Notebook, and it will use large language models like GPT to generate the code for you on fly and execute it at the same time. English SDK for Apache Spark. This is pretty cool. Wow. I feel like English is becoming a new programming language. It is. It's pretty yeah. cool. By the way, if you can read my mind, why I couldn't read yours and know this solution sooner? Let's go! Hello everyone, this is MG and welcome to another video which we're going to talk about a very recent announcement happened in the last day at NAI Summit by Databricks which is called English SDK for Apache Spark. As you can guess, as of now, you don't need to necessarily remember all Apache Spark syntax and APIs to code them, let's say in Databricks Notebook. Right now, you can just type in English as we talk that what type of transformation you want to do on your data or on your Spark data frame, or any user-defined function that you want to develop. Just type them, and on backend, it will use large language model like GPT-4 that I use for this video to generate the code and execute it for you, and even do plotting if needed. It can even connect to internet through some search engine APIs to fetch the data you want and figure out what URL has the data you just ask in English, and create that as a Spark data frame back to your workspace. I gave it a try and quite honest, you just feel that, yes, English is becoming a new programming language. So let's check it out. Before we start, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video. All right, Thank welcome you. back everyone. Well, today we're going to talk about something very different, a very different SDK that just got announced for Apache Spark, which is English for Apache Spark. Well. We have Python API for data for Spark. We call it PySpark. We have a Spark SQL, and now instead of learning another way of interacting with Apache Spark, we all know how to talk in English and type in English. That means now you can also talk in English to create codes automatically based on your English input in Apache Spark. This is something that just got announced in the uh, recent 2023 Data AI Summit by Databricks. And as all we can guess on backend, it is leveraging large language models here, namely OpenAI like GPT-4 to get your English input converted to an Apache Spark code and get executed in Databricks. Quite honest, if we go all the way back to several years ago, and my background is in data scientist. And when I started certainly with Python and then switched into PySpark, it was pretty challenging for me at the beginning because PySpark was a totally different experience, a way that you optimize the code, work with Spark data frames and all those user-defined functions. So it was certainly a considerable amount of learning curve involved. But now that's not really the story anymore. I, well, although we are not there, but this is just the greatest start that you can go around just pure coding and start with the English, which is the sort of a new programming language, I, I feel like. Uh, and, and you can now have your input as an English language. So 
uh, this is the GitHub repository, and they call it PySpark.ai. I'll add the link of the repo also in the Discord channel, so you can check that out. But I went ahead. I was really keen on trying these all uh, um, samples and see how it really works. And I thought that this is certainly worthy to record a video to explain now what you have as of now available coming in in Apache Spark and Databricks. Well, the very first thing that you need to install is pip install PySpark AI. As soon as you have that installed, of course, you can install over your cluster. You have to specify what is the large language model you will use or it will be used to convert your English input to PySpark code as an example here. So here I use OpenAI and my API had access to GPT-4. If you don't have it, you can add it to GPT-3.5. It says in documentation that you can have even non-OpenAI large language models, but I quite honest, I couldn't find any reference that how it performs and how we can add it here as an input. So I went ahead with my GPT-4 or OpenAI model here. Well, after having that configuration in place and creating my Spark AI, now I can use a Spark AI that listen to my English input and create a Spark data frame. But look at that. Not only it can convert my English input to code, but also it can parse internet. And I think on backend it is using Google search engine because it was asking me to put my Google search API stuff as an environment variable. Uh, and potentially you might change your search engine after, but here the default Google, and for example, I was playing around to create a data frame of number of people who got COVID between 2019 or 2021, the total of each people got affected for each country. And it sort of started to telling me that what URL it is parsing and it automatically figured out this is the source of data that I need to check. So if we check that out where it is, There you go. It found center of disease control and prevention. This is actually the first time opening it too. And it seems like found it right. So it can go ahead and parse the data over the URL. And look at that. This is the sort of pretty close to what I asked about the total number of death or people who got COVID for a specific duration of time. So it went ahead and parsed this URL for me and created a data frame back for me. In the sample they provided actually, they said, go ahead and grab the USA national auto sales by brand for 2022. So this is the input. There is no URL. I don't know even where this data is. So I'm back and it use large language model to understand first, connecting to internet as well. What is the URL that has the data? And I think I had the data open, not this one. Yeah, uh, this one. That's the source that it grabbed. And you can see this has the the sales for brand, I think this is the US, there you go. So it's search internet, find the relevant URL and parse it and get the parse results back to me as a data frame inside Databricks. Now I call it AutoDF. And there you go, another one. Uh, you can also create a data frame directly from the URL if you have it. This one is actually this one that shows the brand, US sales and compared to the previous year, it is decreased or increased by percentage. And there you go. The data is parsed for me and I'm just showing the top five without me parsing manually, without me copy and pasting, whatever. So connecting to also internet through large language model to get the results back and generate the code for me, it is pretty powerful. Not only that, I can just simply plot, of course, we just saying my data from using this AI capability plot, it will start send, um, print for me the thoughts it has through that large language model here is GPT-4. So it generate the code. You can see that this is the code converting my data, uh, Spark data frame to pandas. This is the code that created a bar chart for me. So this code got generated and executed on backend without missing that. And there you go, the plot is here. Or a type of plot that is specific, you can type and say that I want to have a pie chart for US sales market and they show me the top five brand as an example there you go my pie chart is here that uh, one two three four five tops are uh, plotted and if you're curious to know what's the back end code this is the code that got generated to create this pie chart without me coding that my input was just english the output is code and executed code and the result of that automatically 
moving further um you can do any sort of transformation you want with just calling ai.transform over your databricks sorry spark data frame brand with the high growth it should get you the this is using spark sql and the results i think is no maybe potentially there's a misvalue or something the data but the idea works and the, the, the code is correct you can even explain a data frame with just saying this ai capability explain for me it says that this is the summary what your data frame has in two lines more transformation i'm gonna change the type of this column to float or i had some percentages of stuff i wanted to remove that i was actually testing to see how it works and it really works it can actually convert my english to text and update my data frame also you can define user defined functions here as an example i want to calculate the next year's cells by multiplying 2022 cells all of them to two to say this is the value for 2023 of course that doesn't make sense potentially there's ml model or more descriptive analysis here you don't need to use a defined function for this scenario but i wanted to check if it can create a user defined function and do what i ask in english and get the results back for me then after this code gets generated register this udf with this name and there you go it told me that hey for your user defined function this is the code that i need to run so the code got generated from this input and then because i registered this data frame that means sorry uh, user uh, user defined function that means i can call it over my data and you can see that 2023 cells got predicted assuming but you can see it is just multiplying these values by two which is here that's all. So that means right now for creating user-defined function, doing transformation, plotting, and even connecting to internet, parsing the data, you can use just pure English. Well, I assume this is evolving. They just recently announced. I, I saw some issues when, for example, when I wanted to parse COVID data, the data got parsed for me. Potentially didn't have all necessary data that I asked, which sort of makes sense because maybe that data and it doesn't available on it's not available publicly on internet. And it has some tricks and potential errors you might see but i think this is a very powerful start and is easily showing us the trend that where we are going i think now for basic or rudimentary coding there is no need to put your time there there is a lot of much more smoother way like english here that can handle all those works functionalities plotting your stuff instead of you going searching internet looking for PySpark syntax we don't remember how to code in PySpark with all details, so I have to sometimes go to the stack for that search it. Now that time is extremely saved, so you can focus on your product, your development, and even focus on developing potentially your own very, very more complex coding scenario. Something that would take months or years to develop. Now you will save a ton of time. So give it a try, and for sure I have no doubt in the near future we might hear more news about it because it just got recently announced and all over community people are gonna share feedback bugs and errors more and more refinement will be coming in so i think that at least from now it's worth to get to know what is available and where we are heading towards hope you enjoyed this video and that's all thank you if you want to be charismatic do not divide your focus always focus on only one thing at a time when you eat you eat when you listen you listen. When you conquer, you conquer. Number two, if you want to have charisma, make a decision, stick to it, and take full responsibility. Then you are a leader and you have charisma. Lastly, listen first and talk second. If you have charisma, you are a good talker, but even a better listener. Dream big, my friends, believe in yourself, and take action. Till next video, take care.